Hello and welcome to Hotspur Way Season 1, Episode 45, sponsored by Zoom. <laughs> we're doing this one on zoom and uh we've not used zoom before i was telling the guys that i'm i'm just astounded at the pr company that made the whole world think that zoom was was greater than food back in covid and uh i don't get it it's shit it's useless and we're blaming harry for that <laughs> yep more fault. Uh, hi harry so i think everyone knows who you are but what we're gonna do is we're gonna have hannah give like a sort of, I don't know, 15 second audio montage explaining who you are. So Hannah, okay. the music's about to roll. Over to you. Okay. Um, 15 seconds is asking a little bit much of me today. Um, so Harry Brooks, a glorified PE teacher on Twitter. <laughs> Welcome to our pod, Harry. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Do you want um, to give yourself a better introduction? Well, I mean, I do work with footballers, but to be honest, how long that's going to last for after this podcast goes out, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> every chance will get cancelled and after this. So, um, yeah. So, no, I, I, I train footballers. Um, but, yeah, according to many on Twitter, uh, failed PE teacher, failed footballer, failed coach, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Nice and cheery. Love yeah. that. Just Mate, like Spurs right now, eh? <laughs> well, we'll, we'll get on to them in a minute. Mate, when you when you coach them, in, in what way, what what kind of coach are you? Like, yes, I know, yeah. So joke tactical... aside, so basically, yeah. So joke aside, I um I work with professional academy footballers. Um, it's working with them outside of their clubs. So obviously, um, if you can imagine a PT, it's basically like that, but technical coaching and game related coaching. So uh working with players, some of them are in the Champions League. Uh one of them's actually got a game tonight. Um, for Dortmund, um, and then you're, uh, you're yeah, doing this is, levels. You're doing this instead of watching your your client. That's well, be, well, I mean, that's fantastic. To be honest, to be honest, you know priorities, isn't it? But uh, yeah. I have to sort of keep him a little bit quiet uh, due to NDAs. But then again, it's not going to be that hard to work it out. So I kind of just fucked it as well there. So there you go. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's <laughs> what I do. Uh, just different levels of the game, and yeah, just try to help them be the best they can be. And um, it's as simple as that, really. All right, cool. So we have a question. It's a series of questions. I'm going to read it out. So there, there's an old man's pub in Limassol, Cyprus. And uh, one of the, are they called patrons? Am I really showing my, my age? He's called yes. Panny. And what, what Panny, he, he said, you've got, a, you've got a mention that as you were walking into the pub, that's exactly what happened. I was walking into the pub and he was outside on the, on the veranda bit. And I saw him there and he like, and I had a glum face on after, you know, the four Spurs defeats. And I said, listen, mate, I need a question from you for tonight's pod. And it can't just be why Spurs rubbish. It needs to be something interesting. So I said, you've got to think about it. And he goes, yeah, but I'm just not in the mood. About half an hour later, he comes in and he goes, I'll just WhatsApp to you the, uh, the question. And he goes, right. So I take a look. And he sent a paragraph. One, two, three, four paragraphs. So here we go. This one is for Johnny, who he calls the horniest person on the pod. Johnny's not with us tonight. Johnny's the American, by the way. He's our token American, Harry. Okay. okay. So we, we need him to beef up the numbers in America, but he's not really helping. <laughs> so he's so this is Panny. He's asking, I'm not really into fish fingers, but as you mentioned, James, when you walked into the cafe, and he goes, make sure you say that. I don't know why. Which ones last longer? I don't know what it means by last longer. Findus Bird's Eye Young's. And is that with ketchup or salt and vinegar? That's for Johnny. Johnny, you can answer that on the group chat and then we'll talk about it next week. It's going to start. You have to Google who these companies are, okay? Second question is, why do we always end up with the worst Brazilians on the planet? <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. It's You're not. Wrong. It's That's a, a fair question. <laughs> but then he ends I mean, with, to be fair, yeah. I mean, judging that, I literally saw a tweet earlier of the Brazilians that Man United have signed in the Premier League, and it is horrific. Like we 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 close. It's pretty much level playing field between us and Man United about how bad it is. Yeah, but yeah. Where do we go bar for bar? Yeah, them. yeah, but they're they're in tatters at the moment. Right, he does end it like he says. I don't get this bit, and that also includes Paulinho. Oh, Paulinho! Fucking hell! Spelling, Panny. Spelling. And this one's for Hannah. And Hannah, he says, we all make mistakes. I'm a patient man, 
We have all the time in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so just to give Harry some context here, <laughs> Hanny fancies Hannah. And uh, okay. Oh. Last week, he was asking, he asked, why is she single? And we found out that she's not single anymore. <laughs> and so, right. ergo, this question. Right, now, before we get into Spurs, uh, well, Chelsea and then Liverpool, we do have... Toz, do you want to read out the first question from Twitter? Yeah, came in. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's going to direct you more at Harry's to ponder the spotlight a little bit. Get your squirm in. Um, but I think it's a fun group discussion, really. Um, and it comes from Pal Kid94. Um, which current Premier League manager would make the best joy video? And by joy, that's J O Y for jerk off instruction. <laughs> oh, was, is that what that stands for? I was I Googling it. That. Yeah, I didn't either. I, I, was I never Googling knew it. that. Okay, good. So we're a good. Seven minutes into the podcast, and that's when it's going to ke- get me cancelled. Okay, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> on. Needs what, go on. what was the question again? So, which current Premier League manager would make the best joy video? So they're telling you how to do it. They're looking you in the eyes. Their their legs spread, <laughs> telling you what to do, licking their lips, going a bit ASMR or a bit of a Sean Dyche gravel voice. I mean, I feel yeah. like Andrew would be the most motivating one, surely. Oh, I reckon he would. He would. <laughs> yeah. He would get you cranking for a while. I reckon. Yeah, and I mean, the motivation <laughs> for the first fifteen minutes through the roof. <laughs> be short burst at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's stay. Yeah, I'll, I'll stick to Ange. Go on. Let's let's back our back our man. He's backing you by the sounds of things. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so I suppose we've got to talk just briefly about Chelsea. We're not going to go too too like deep into it, like Ange just did with you. But I I would say that <laughs> that was the worst performance I've seen this season. It's not, and for context, yeah. it's because of who we played and yeah. the fact that they're supposed to be rivals and that they had uh, most of Chelsea injured. And uh, I'm talking about the area. The, is it a borough? I'm not sure, but they they didn't really have a team. And we didn't turn up, really. Yeah. Anything yeah, to say that's, about that's, that? Yeah, that's, that's the angriest I've been with um, Spurs in a long, long time in terms mm-hmm. of uh, performance. I was just, mm. I, I don't mind when things go wrong, but it was just the sheer lack of personality um, from pretty much any player on the pitch. That That's not excusable. You know, it's okay. So even the Liverpool game on Sunday, which I'm sure we'll get on to, you know, yes, it was conceding four goals again, going 4-0 down, etc. But you saw the ideas of what's being worked on versus Chelsea. It, it was just absolutely nothing, no personality, no ideas. Um, and I think that's why you saw Ange so um, animated in the first half, because, you know, it, it was just nothing. There was no, there was no identity, no representation of what they're trying to be. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it's the, it was definitely for me, the worst performance of the season. Um, even though it wasn't the ugliest scoreline, definitely the worst performance. All right, mate, I've got to ask you something. So I, I compare, um, like when I when I work, I compare a lot of what I do with my work, and the reason why is a few years ago I read the Alex Ferguson autobiography, which I think mm. anyone who wants to get into management, not just football management, I mean any sort of management, I mm. advise everyone to read that book. And there's there's a few parallels when you're managing people, whether it's footballers or a team of people. And what you can't do is you can well you can give them instructions on what to do. You can you can show them how to do it, but then it's down to them to do it, right? Yeah. And you're involved in football. So when people start saying it's all Angie's fault and it's not good enough that he's just screaming at them, what have you got? Like I don't like I don't want to give you a leading question. Can you like sort of summarize? if you think that that's pathetic talk from people. I think I think what so much of football analysis um, fails to do, it fails to look at the context behind things. Um, it's just it's, it's just shouting idiots saying the first thing that comes to their head. Um, so, you know, and you even see that with, with punditry on TV who should know better, you know, like, for example, if you make a mistake from playing out from the back, the first thing that people say is, oh, you can't play there. Sometimes it's okay to go long. Um, and I think that's what people were doing with Ange because 
because obviously in recent weeks, Spurs have been very open. It's not quite flowing as much as you want it to. Um, the first thing they're going to go is, is looking at Ange and say, oh, well, it's not good enough, rather than looking at the context behind that. Um, of course, Ange has made mistakes and will continue to make mistakes like anyone. But yeah, in terms of the blame um, or where I put the blame, um, it, it's certainly not at his door. Um, it's a it's everyone's responsibility. But what I would say is that I think that Ange is building something fantastic. I think the foundations are there. And at the moment, you don't have the players to make that work. But you're better off, you know, at the start, getting the culture right, getting the environment right, getting the foundations there. And then in time, ideally, you had the pieces to that. We all saw what happened when you tried to get the immediate managers in Conte and Jose, and, and it didn't work. You know, they're trying to do it there and then. And that 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 approach doesn't work for Tottenham. It doesn't really work for most clubs. Um, so they're trying to build something long-term with Ange. They're trying to create a culture. And the way you do that is the first thing you do is by setting that culture. And as you alluded to, you know, I say to players all the time, control the controllables. Give the best of yourself. Do what you can and let the rest take care of itself. You know, Ange can't physically make Basuma pass forward. He can put all the foundations there and all the pieces in place to make him do that and encourage him to do that but at the end of the day it's the employees that have got to take that on board and do it and I think as you'll see in the summer the ones that can't do it and I just use Bissouma as there as an example I think Ange actually really likes him and I like him but the ones that don't buy into it um, yeah they 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 won't they won't last and it's whether you you give the man time to make it work or you you pull the plug at the first few hurdles and you know that would be uh, that would make that would make no sense to me. Yeah, hundred percent. That was so yeah. refreshing, Harry. I know. I couldn't agree more. Like <laughs> it goes to, like you look at United as like a polar opposite and how the Ten Hag seasons have mm. gone, and he's openly yeah. admitting, "Yeah, I've had to change my system because I haven't got the players." And so he's gone to his Plan B, and everyone is screaming at Ange, going, "Oh, where's the Plan B, Ange?" Well, look how Plan B goes. It doesn't always get you anywhere. And when people say plan B, they often don't actually know what they mean by that. They're just, mm-hmm. if if, you, if you, anyone that says plan B, if you actually ask them to explain what they mean, they don't actually know what a plan B is. They're just thinking because this isn't working, there must be some other magic formula that does. Um, or quite a popular one is we've got to be more pragmatic. What does pragmatic mean? <laughs> it, it, you know, like if you, if you tried, so if you tried to be more defensive with this group of players, you're really telling me that's going to, that's pragmatic and it's going to make them stronger. You know, it's it's uh, uh yeah. Again, it, it's, a lot of it's just very lazy analysis. Ten Hag is a good one, but what I would say with Ten Hag is, you know, I think the diff. Uh, I'm all for giving managers time as long as you warrant that time being given. So if you can see the things that are being put in place, then you have to appreciate it's not going to be immediate. Um, Ten Hag is a little bit different because I don't quite know what's being put in place there. I don't know what the next month, six months, two years looks like under him. Whereas with Ange. I think you can see it. That's why I know there was there was a graphic the other day, wasn't there, about um, comparing Ange, Arteta and, and Klopp mm. in their first 35 games or something. Yeah. Um, and yeah, those two managers had, you know, um, inconsistent starts, but both those clubs saw what was being built towards. So they were patient and then they gave them the pieces and then, you know, you look at them now and they're both flying. Um, or Klopp was flying for years and now he's leaving. But yeah, um, so I think, yeah, a lot of it's just very lazy. Um, you know, it's not that you have to love Ange, obviously not, but, you know, if you if you have certain opinions, don't just say he's shit and expect everyone to believe it. Just, you have to be able to, you know, understand the context behind things. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I want to say, oh, go long. To who? Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's funny. Like, Son, yeah, he's, he's six foot ever, but I think he's the first six foot striker I've seen who I think could get bullied and manhandled by an under fourteen. Like, yeah, no, he's not. He's not the best under pressure. He really isn't. He's very just like frozen when that happens. Yeah, how I see it. So yeah, everyone's slagging Ange off. Um, do one. Quite <laughs> <frankly>. <laughs> That's very <Exactly>. succinct. <laughs> I mean, I am a little bit biased. I've literally got three of Ange Postecoglou's books. I'm reading one of them right now. So, um, which one? I actually adore the man. Actually, you know what? He, uh, honestly, this, this, this is genuine. So, doing what I do, it's actually really difficult to be a, a genuine fan of a football club because, you know, you work with players from different clubs. You know, you have to do what's best for the player. Um, and then that kind of also coincide, coincided a lot of the time with Spurs being just really poor and mismanaged. But what Ange just 
genuinely done this year. He's made me feel like a proper fan again. Like it's, he's genuinely made me like Tottenham. Um, and I think that's why Thursday versus Chelsea hurt so much because like when you give a shit again uh, and then you see something like that, it really gets to you. So it kind of like reminded me of when I was like, you know, years and years ago and just Tottenham till I die. Um, but um, yeah, no, I, I love the man. I think he's, I think he's exactly what the club need. Um, and I think he'll be the best thing that's happened to the club um, for many years. Mate, how old are you? 29. So you would, when we, what, how old oh, I grew, I grew up with Tottenham proper shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like proper shit. So 29. So you would have started to remember what, when you were six? The six first, the old? first see, the first player I remember, like my favorite play was Teddy Sheringham. And that was right at the end of his second stint at Tottenham. Um, oh, then so my you, second favorite play was through... Bobby Zamora. Oh, right. So you, you went you went through like Glenn Hoddle and no 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 not quite no oh do you mean when Glenn Hoddle was a manager uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yes yeah, yeah would so he have been the first manager two. it was him or no, him or wouldn't. David Pleat was the first manager I properly remember you don't um, remember George Graham are you lucky no 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 so I like I remember like Gary Doherty playing centre back one week striker the next yeah. and the nickname no. Ginger Pele and just yeah. that so when people say that it's shit at Spurs right now like you don't know what shit is like that yeah. was proper shit. <laughs> well, 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 my friend, I I witnessed the nineties, so I, I I saw all of the the dross, and when Christian Gross turned up, literally with a with a travel card, and that was on the news. <laughs> so we didn't really we didn't have internet back then, and he he was on the news with a travel card, and he said, "I used this to come here," and immediately everyone just said, "Oh no, you're not you're not the guy. <laughs> He's just not." And then you've heard Gary Mabbott and the rest of the players talk about him. So yeah, they they don't know how 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 good it is right now and how good it has yeah, been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look. But you know what? Like, you're a football fan. You're allowed to enjoy the game however you want. And, you know, if you are, you know, if you are seeing Tottenham right now where you're regularly, you know, 3-0 down, 4-0 down, you're allowed to be pissed off. Well, not regularly, but you know what I mean. You know, you're allowed to be pissed off and upset because you just see it as a fan. And it's very difficult to for a fan, and you know, in football to understand that, you know, you have got to look at a bigger picture. I guess because, like, you know, the bigger picture has been so often promised at Tottenham. So, how long can you wait? But unfortunately, there is there is no other way about it. If you commit to something like this, you've got to appreciate there's it takes time and there's going to be some big bumps along the road. Uh, you know, and there's no guarantee that it does work out. But I'd rather I'd rather go to games with this kind of um vision of what we're trying to be than what it was before. Um give me this end of the other week over that. Exactly. Like Hannah. You know mm-hmm. how difficult change is, right? Now you're going out with a new guy. I mean, how difficult is it when it <laughs> when it comes to change? It's not easy. And if change was easy, everyone would change things all the time. And people mm-hmm. like their comfort zones. So do you want to tell us a little bit about change and how painful it can be? Oh, do I have to? <laughs> make you sound like she's having a fucking sex change. I was going to say, like, <laughs> this, is, this is a good change. I don't think this is a good example. <laughs> I, wasn't, I mean, in, in general, just tell us how... How, like what people should expect and what they shouldn't expect. Basically. What would change? Yeah, with like, is this thing going to happen overnight? Oh no! With Ange, no, right? No, I think honestly, people are deluding themselves. Um, I, I, but then I always say this: I think social media has a hell of a lot to answer for. They just, it's just like that instant gratification type thing. Um, yeah, I want it and I want it now. So yeah, I think it, we need to be patient it and it will happen it will happen I'm sure. and i am a good example of that exactly <laughs> uh like i was it, it, it bothered me that Ange in the press conference it was in jest but maybe it got to him a bit where he said well, you know hopefully i'm that guy you know to bring around change i don't know if you heard that bit right at the end this was after Chelsea, I believe. I think it was after the Chelsea game. We was like, yeah, you know, mm. ho- hopefully I'm that guy. And it was like, oh, mate, don't listen to him. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I think hope- he meant that in a very tongue-in-cheek way. You I know, because he's did. yeah, he he's, he's a one he, thing I like about him. He doesn't he doesn't get led by narrative, and I really like that. You know, because. Um, it'd be very tempting for someone in his position to feel like they constantly have to explain themselves. And, you know, at the end of the day, who the fuck you explain yourself for? Like, it's mm-hmm. just going to be twisted into whatever pe- agenda people have anyway. Right. So um, I actually really, that's one of the th- many things I really admire about him. He doesn't, 
He doesn't get perturbed by the noise around him. He just, he does what he does. He does it to the best he can. And if it works, great. And if it doesn't, well, he'll, he'll die on his own sword. And and, yeah. and that's who he is. Yeah, I was yeah. just worried, worried about our board. That's that's the one thing I worry about, that you don't have one or two people in there just going, oh, you know, this is a bit shit, isn't it? And mm. that's what I, that's the only thing that I worry about. But I know that he wouldn't care even if they said something. It's like, you've hired me for this long. I'm here yeah. to do a job, live it, get on with it. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about no, He won't change for anyone. Oh, no. no. Why should he? I was yes, not going to say, say no Ryan Mason there. <laughs> Can we talk about him in a bit? <laughs> there it is. Yeah. <laughs> the I want to wanna talk about Ryan Mason a bit. Actually, I'll tell you what we can do. Because I think that the press conference for the Liverpool game was the one that he said that change is coming with regards. And it's going to be a, not a painful rebuild, which it it is. And I've, if you listen to a lot of podcasts this week, you'll hear him say, well, this is the painful rebuild that we've, you know, that we're coming across. And it is. Mm. But he alluded to the fact that some of the coaching staff would uh, may be changed, which for me, that was most interesting because obviously footballers are going to be changed and we're going to have to bring in new ones because, you know, as I said before, you can, and Harry, you can allude to this as well, you can train a player till the end of the earth, but if if he doesn't want to listen or he just can't do it and you know you've got some targets to meet and that player can't do it, then, you know, try it on someone else. Mm -hmm. But the coaching thing interested me. I've always had a problem with Ryan Mason. I've had a problem with him since um, Pochettino first spoke to him and told him, listen, you know, you're not going to really be playing that much. And he he thought it was above his station. And he said this recently, by the way, in the, what's that podcast that everyone uh, wanks over? High performance, isn't it? That's the one, yeah. (laughs) And he kept saying, I want to touch the grass. Well, fucking, anyway. And um, yeah, you, you you heard it in there that it's like, you know, I I thought I was better than I was. And you could see he wasn't sincere. Or I could hear it in his voice anyway, that he wasn't sincere even saying that. And so I just thought, you're a bit of a snake, aren't you? And I've, I've had my eyes on, it, eyes on him for ages. And I know what it's like to go into a company and for other people to have wanted your position, which he did. He came out last year and he said it openly to the press that he wanted the role and to then not get it and they bring in someone else and in front of you, they're like, yeah, lovey-dovey, love you, respect you and everything else. And then behind your back, you know, they're, they're telling your team A, B and C. And I've been in that position. I know what it's like. And over time, you learn to pick up on it quickly. I'm not saying that he's done that. I'm just saying that I have a hunch that this is what he's like. Well, he's snaking Ange. 100%, yes. That's what I believe. I'm mm-hmm. not the only one who believes it either. There's a few people. Controversial. Mm-hmm. There's a few of the ITKs. No, it's not It's not <laughs> ITKs. It's like, for instance, Bardi. I don't know if you know who Bardi is. Oh, yeah. But, uh, he's a big know, Emerson Royale fan, so I'll take what he says with a pinch of salt. No, he's not. Bardi? No, he's not. Not at all. I swear he is. No, no. Well, no unless no. it's like an act. No, no, not at all. No, so B- Bardi's from originally from the Fighting Cock, and he's now on the extra inch. And um, yeah, he, he calls him a snake at every opportunity. He's, he's never come out and said it like I'm saying it, though. Oh, that sounds that sounds arrogant. Well done. I, no, I, I I just I just meant that he and Harry. You don't have to comment on this. Maybe you know the guy, but I just I'm have... I'm, I'm keeping very quiet. Yeah, I'm, I've I'm, noticed this. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. say nothing. Did I? I'll probably right. get cancelled for talking about dildos, not talking about this kind of stuff. The, the funny thing is, you're the only one talking about dildos. So I mean, you, you crack. We'll I've get listened, to that. I've listened to enough of your podcasts. To we'll know, get that's, to that's, that, the, Harry. that's the topic of conversation. We part. haven't forgotten you. But I I just I'm. I think that it would be what, and I, look, Ange is of a certain age and vintage that, and you can see that he's the kind of guy that's emotionally turned on and he, he understands what's going on around him. You can see that, that his awareness is like, if it was, if it was a uh, football manager, it's 20 out of 20 with him. And if he spotted anything like this, then he may have had, like I would have done, I would have had a word with with Ryan. I said, listen, mate, I know what you're doing. Stops now, or you don't work at this club. 
and we'll see how it goes because I we tell you what guys we mentioned I think five shows ago the exact words were there's something going on in the background remember we said it mm-hmm. we said there's yeah. something wrong and I wanted to say it then like there's something wrong here and it looks to me like some sort of sabotage now you can say I'm not saying the whole thing was I know this is really controversial but hear me out we start <laughs> off like a house on fire everyone's really happy and then and then you you know when you go out on a date and you um you really want to impress the girl and or or, or guy and you do everything possible and then you sort of like with them for a bit and they say to you oh uh can you can you like put this this uh this nail in the in the walls so I can have a portrait and it's like six months later she's still asking you but in the first two weeks going out you would have you know you would have bought the drill done it all perfectly and you know who'd have done but then after a while you sort of like ease off some of that is definitely in here obviously injuries have been in there's a lot of things it's never normally one thing but there was always that one thing in my mind where I thought how is this happening why are some of the players completely turned off? And why is Angelo saying he wishes that a lot of the players were a bit like Romero? I found I that think that's an issue we've always had, though. We're going to talk about personalities in a yeah. bit, and I want to get Harry's Harry's point on that. But for me, yeah, Snake, get the fuck out of our club. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I've, 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 I've got my. I've had my eyes on him. For, I've had. I've had my. As soon as he mentioned last year that he wants the job, and I thought, "There's no fucking way you're going to get the job," and I hope <laughs> you don't stay. And then he stayed, and I thought, mm, "Oh dear." I love it when you put your tinfoil hat on. It's not tinfoil though. Oh, it is. No, yeah, is it? <laughs> I don't know. You just t- take a look yeah, at everything. It's, a bit it's of good a on you. It's good I, on you. Uh, it's it's uh, it sort of is alright. <laughs> oh yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> Them straws are collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> like a man's uh, arse around that. Fuck me. That's my take on it. Look, at, in the Liverpool game, Harry, you you were right. Ha- um, and said it as well. We, I thought we performed a lot better. Like there was yeah. some rhythm to what we were doing, mate. Do you want to talk I about think so. that? Better? Yeah, I think so. I think. Um... You know, to 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 get into, I think again, all the foundations are being laid, um, but it's very it's a very drastic change what he's doing right now compared to what was going on at the club beforehand. So you know, a lot of the personalities um, would have been brought in for other you know regimes, um, and a lot of this first season is about identifying who are the ones that can come on that journey um, and back that journey to the hilt. Because you can see that, again, all the foundations are there, but the player quality and the player profiles just aren't there in key areas right now. And that is why you can have a result where you can actually perform quite well in stages, but you go down 4-0, you know, to Liverpool. Um, because it's it's all there, but just, you know, the weak links um, or, or the wrong profiles just see that all that good work kind of undone or, or come unstuck. And that's where it takes time. You know, it, it, it's, it's not going to be done in one window, one, two transfer windows. It's probably not even, it's not even going to be done in this transfer window. You'd like to think that, you know, this time next year, they're in a much more um, stable position in terms of um, the outlook of what they're trying to be, but it still won't be done. You know, it, it, it takes, it takes a while to do this stuff. And I think that you have to have the confidence in what you do to ride out the negative times, if you believe he is the right one, obviously if, if Spurs get to a stage where they don't believe and your staff or players, etc., aren't the right ones. And that's a different story. But whilst they believe that you have to accept, even if fans don't want to, that there are going to be lots of bumps in the road and, and that's par for the course. You can't really do anything about that. You know, and that, it is what it is. Sorry. I muted myself on Zoom and then couldn't figure out how to unmute myself. (laughs) (laughs) No, exactly, mate. So question from Craig. Lots of people want Spurs to lose against City to Arsenal. I always believe I am a Spurs fan. It's my club first before anything else. And I want us to win every game. Yes, it will obviously be annoying if Arsenal win the league. What do you think? Harry, do you want to answer this one? Um... I mean, obviously for the club, if you're being realistic, they want Man City to win because 
you know, the, 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 they're very, they're, they're rivals with Arsenal, obviously, and you don't want that. Um, it's a very difficult one. But what do you want? Uh, You're obviously the fan, obviously the fan in you doesn't want Arsenal to win the league. Um, so, you know, you want Man City to win, but you know, I, let's, if I put myself in the shoes of like Ange and the coaching staff and even the players, you can't, you can't plan to lose and under any circumstance as mental as that is, you know, you've got to just look after your own thing because imagine, so, all right, let's say Spurs do beat uh, Man City and then Arsenal win the league. And yeah, of course it'll be, there'll be laughs, it'll be painful, but you know, people have short memories and I'm not saying it will get forgotten about, but imagine if you start part of your culture of like, we're always going to go for it apart from certain scenarios. And I know this is quite a specific scenario, but you're not really building anything there that can be um, taken into for for next year because you're showing that you're not actually wedded to your beliefs. You're not convinced in what you do because you'll 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 sacrifice them for for certain things. And I know this is probably a bit of a specific situation, but as a as a coach, let's say if I was a manager, I wouldn't be planning to lose against Man City. You can't. You've got to go and do the best that you can do, no matter what and let the rest take care of itself. You're not in control of Arsenal winning the league. You are in control of what you do. And the second you start allowing things to be less than that, is that is a very slippery slope um, that it can be hard to get off of. So, listen, I, I would I would be very disappointed if any of the players or the staff down tools versus Man City. Um, obviously, as a fan, you'd probably want it more to stop that, but... In terms of my respect for anyone at the club, if they down tools for that Man City game, it, I would lose a lot of respect for that. Right, but as mm. someone called Harry and with the surname Brooks, pretend you weren't a coach, you're a Spurs fan, diehard Spurs fan. What is it you want? Oh no, of course, yeah, you'd want Man City to win. <laughs> you just would, of course, you would. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, yeah. What, yeah, what I what, uh... yeah, what I want is, I mean, cloning technology is still we're a long way off, which is a shame yeah. because. Dolly the Sheet was done like in 96 and we should have progressed and we haven't but if we could clone Emerson Royale and clone other 10 versions of him and put them out against City that would be the <laughs> ideal the ideal starting lineup. maybe oh no a Brian Hill against Haaland at centre back that's what I'm <laughs> that'd be, <laughs> be hilarious <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah you know as a fan as a fan thing. you're allowed to want that you're supposed to turn it into like you know football, um, you know, trivi- trivial and stuff like that. It's supposed to be that. So as a fan, yeah, of course, you're supposed to want that kind of stuff. Um, you'd obviously rather be in a position where you don't have to want those things, but that's the way the season's gone. But um, yeah, as a fan, of course you would. And, that, and you know, right and all. Yeah, I, I w- I'm old enough to remember when we went up to Man U when it was right, yeah, United. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was listening to that on the radio and um, I... I Never forget Capital Gold, fifteen forty eight AM, and Ferdinand scored. I think it was a header. It was some some sort of looping. I can't remember. It was either a header or some sort of looping shot. And I, I remember just going, "Oh shit!" I didn't cheer. I didn't cheer. Maybe if I was there, I might have cheered, or if I was watching it, I might have cheered. But listening to the radio, I remember just not cheering, going, "Oh crap!" Mm-hmm. And then I think we lost three one, and I, I was super happy, and so was everyone else. And I, I don't see a difference now. I really don't. Especially now with social media back then. Was it 97, I think? I can't remember. Back then. How do you think the crowd would react? Or will, let's say Spurs go 1-0 up versus Man City. How do you think the crowd are going to react? We'll be I able think to... that's really interesting, it's actually. Very interesting. Yeah, I think yeah. we would be able to pinpoint who the day trippers were. <laughs> quite easily, right? Yeah. To be fair, I don't go and celebrate anyway, really. I'm a proper plastic fan, and so um, you wouldn't even be able to tell with me if I was celebrating or not, no matter who it was. <sighs> why? <laughs> why? Why is that? Oh, I'm, what, what, why am I a plastic fan? Yeah, why? I just, because, again, when I go to the football, I actually like to enjoy watching the football. So, like, people around me will, like, moan at me if I don't sing, and I just want to tell them to fuck off and mind their own business. Uh, <laughs> like, I want to go, and I want to, I want to watch the game, and I don't want to sing. I want to sit down. And if a goal scored, I'll stand up and clap or cheer. But mm-hmm. other than that, leave me alone. Don't start getting me to s- stand up if you hate Arsenal. No, I want to sit down, watch the game. And I'm a plastic fan. I fully admit it. Um, <laughs> I just want to watch the game and le- be left alone. Harry? Yeah? Did you turn around at 65 minutes? Did I what? 
There you go. That's all I needed. <laughs> I, think I, I think that one's done. <laughs> turn around at 65 minutes. Why would I have done that? What was that about? What's, what what movement was that? <laughs> no, that, that's exactly it, my point. Perfect. It's okay. Thank you, Harry. Okay. All right, there you go. All good. <laughs> oh, Where were we? Oh, was that, the, um, was that the um was that the pensioner thing, the tickets, the, the season tickets? Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering because I was right. I was there. Uh, right. I didn't see anyone turn around, so I was just wondering. No, I wouldn't have turned around even if I knew what was happening. No. Perfect answer. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Ooh, you're a good egg. You are a good egg, Harry. <laughs> well, we, I, I don't know how long we've been going for because Zoom is so great. It doesn't actually tell us. But um, look, we could talk about Liverpool and we could talk about when Richarlison came on and all of this. But I think it's good for us to talk about the characters of the players. And it's good to have mm. you on to discuss this, Harry. Because sure. you could have... You, you could be the you could have the greatest talent in any walk of life, not just in football. But if you don't have application, drive and hunger, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I think you see this when you when you're training and you're coaching players, right? Yeah. So when so what I find in football, believe it or not, so obviously players go through different stages of their career. Typically, obviously, there's different routes like the Jamie Vardy route, but typically a player will be at an academy, they'll get a scholar, then they'll get their pro, and and so on. Um, it's actually too easy, in my opinion, uh, certainly in this country, to get your first pro. Loads of players that, um, that I know and have seen and watch, etc., they get a first pro based off of some kind of talent. Um, but actually having a career in the game, that's where the mentality comes in. So, you know, talent can get you. It is a bit of a you know an old phrase, but it is true. Talent can get you so far, but it is your mindset and mentality that takes care of the rest. And, you know, if if... If you're obsessed with what you do, um, you will always assert talent that isn't obsessed. It just, it is what it is. Um, so if you have the two, then um, obviously happy days. And I think that's why Angie's so geared towards making sure that, you know, the culture is there to make sure that it doesn't even necessarily have to be a, a positive mindset in terms of working hard. You can be the hardest worker, but you might not believe in what's being done. And if you don't believe in it, it's not going to work. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff that Angie's talking about is that you are all in, you're 100% in. And that is a mindset and a mentality thing. Of course, the quality has to be there. You can't just, you know, work hard um, and work your way to, to 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 winning the league or Champions League or whatever it is. There has to be quality. Um, but if you aren't all in on the vision that's being uh, created, it's not going to work. And that's the kind of personalities and Angie that, that he's talking about, you know, because they listen, they're all professional footballers at the highest levels. You know, they all give a shit. You know, it's very rare that you'll find a player that doesn't give a shit or doesn't work hard. They do commit their lives to this, but it is just about that belief in what's being done. Um, and that is where, you know, and will have decisions to make in terms of who does he see being a part of that journey, not just the quality of the player, but in terms of the mindset and being able to, you know, be all in on, on, on what he's trying to do. Right, you don't have to tell us if you don't want to. Go but on. I think you might know either know people that know players in our current squad or maybe even know some of the squad. Hmm. Would you say that we have uh, quite a few... Actually, this is a leading question. How many, <laughs> how many strong characters, really strong characters, would you say that we have in that squad? I honestly think most of it's there. And again, the strength of the, the strength of character, it depends on what it is. You know, it's about, are you buying into what they do and are you able to do that? So I don't look at, I don't look at the players and think that they're, they're weak minded. I really don't. Um, I just don't know whether some of them are suited to what's trying to be achieved. So let's say for example, um, listen, Emerson Royale, right? His mindset is fantastic. It really is. You can't knock the man. The fact that, you know, he can, get so much stick from his fan base and yet actually, you know, for a period of time under Conte uh, and so on, he, he turned it around and performed well and was really then liked by the players. That's a, that is an incredibly tough mindset to have, but you know, I don't think he's stylistically suited to, to what Angie's trying to do and what he's trying to achieve. That doesn't mean that he's a weak minded player. It means that he's not suited. So I don't look at any of those players and look at them and think that you're a weak personality. Um, you know, even someone like Brendan Johnson. So at the start of the season, I was a little bit unhappy with him because I thought he wasn't showing much personality, being quite passive. But 
it shows the strength of his mindset that I think he turned that around and he started showing the best of himself and and really trying to take the game and work on his game. And that's a real that shows a real strong mentality and mindset. So I don't really look at any of them as, as weak. And I don't and listen, honestly, I, I don't know any of them to, to know that um in the first team. But um, you know, I, I just I, I think that I think the issue is that a lot of them just aren't perhaps geared towards, or certainly some of them aren't geared towards the style of football. Um, and the environment that Angie's trying to create, and that's not that's not a negative about them. That's just their style, and that's who they are as a player, and that's fine. You know, you can't you can't necessarily fit every environment you go into. Um, you know, like I said, the environment that was being created before Ange was for a number of years under you know Conte and Nuno and Jose. It was so different to what it is now. Um, so there's going to be people that perhaps a bit hesitant to to come along the ride or go along the journey. And and that is, and that's just what it is. That's, that's the nature of the beast. All right. So you've just confirmed that Ryan Mason is there doing his snake thing, but the thing, the thing that I'm talking about as well, mate, is like, well, you've got Vicario and you've got Ben White, bloody Ben White. I mean, doing what he's doing to his gloves. And it's just like, you know, trying to yank his gloves away from him. Mm. Fucking elbow him. Stand on him. Do whatever you're gonna do. What? The, what is? I don't know. I come from a different background. I mean, that's what I'm used to. You know, someone's gonna do that to me. I'm gonna give it back times two. Mm. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that kind of gutsy. Sort of, you know, I come from when I know what you mean. I know what you when, mean. When, I think when, was when Boy Keen was around. You know what I mean? Yeah. And mm. and I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing that. I don't see it. I just don't see it. Maybe it's maybe it's a state of football today because I actually don't know a Roy Keen kind of character that's around in football today. So maybe I know what you mean, but it's about, I think that bravery and showing personality is about, I'm going to sound really soppy here, but it's about being um, completely authentic as to who you are. And you can show that in different ways. So, you know, for example, it, it doesn't have to be, if it's not your personality, it doesn't have to be crashing into everyone. Romero is clearly a very front fitted player. That's his personality. It's about showing the best of who you are. So, you know, there are some people I know when I, when I play football, I am someone that I I like to give it back, and I like you know I, I like to have that 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 um that kind of uh, spite on a pitch. It, it makes me play better. But there are lots of people and lots of players that perform better when they shut themselves off from all of that. And that could be Vicario, who knows? So I think I know what you're trying to say, and I think that I think it's I think you've got to be just authentically yourself. And listen, there's no question that there is less of those kind of Roy Keane type players or Vieira's where. It's those, you know, um, very aggressive 1v1 battles and uh, it can get heated. Um, you know, the rule changes have kind of um, obviously seen to that. But I think as long as you're giving the best version of yourself and you're authentic about it, um, it, it doesn't really matter what kind of personality you are. You know, Lily King was one of the best captains that this club has ever had. And he led by example. He wasn't into the shouting. He wasn't into the, the, the crunching tackles. He wasn't into the... Um, the you know the, the the loudest voice in the pitch he led by example so I think you just have to be authentically yourself and whatever that looks like give the best version of yourself and and let the rest take care of itself like I said I'm someone that when I play um I I I need to have that needle on the pitch I need to have that hatred for the opposition that's what makes me tick other people they just need to have that be able to switch off from that and that's fine as well there's no right or wrong way to do it as long as you are being authentic and it's not a fake then it doesn't really matter Look, we have we have that in Romero. I think he's uh, mm. he's a blood and thunder kind of player, right? Mm -hmm. And then you've got Anne saying it, he wishes what Romero had with him and not more of the other players, or worse to that effect. And sometimes I don't know if I if I'm Anne and I'm seeing that, I would I would have said the same thing. Maybe not in public, but I would have. I, would have I think what he means by that, though, I think he means Romero, again, he gives the best of himself of who he is. So, and that looks different for every single player. So, again, I think he likes Basuma. I like Basuma. But let's use him as an example. He's not the kind of player to be crushing into players necessarily, but he is the kind of player that if he gives the best of himself, it's constantly looking to get the ball on the turn, going forward, playing risky passes, turning out of risky areas. So, he needs... You know, he needs to have a bit more of the Romero in terms of, well, that's what you're really bloody good at. You need to have the personality to do that again and again and again. I don't think he meant in the sense of like more players have to be crashing into players and blood and thunder. I think he meant 
some of the players perhaps too often don't show the best of themselves or don't give the best of themselves or don't give themselves the platform to show the best of themselves. I think that's what he was on about. Um, and again, that that's relevant. That's relative to each personality. Yeah. yeah. I think if you look at the North London Derby, for example, like Romero would personify that. Like he took the game by the scruff of the net, put yeah. his personality in and yeah. changed it. And then we very nearly got something out of it. He could have had a well, hat trick. He took charge of it. And I think, again, some other players, though, at different parts of the season, they can be guilty of not asserting themselves in that way with their personality. Again, mm-hmm. it's like you mentioned Basuma, Liverpool, fantastic performance. And yeah, everything he was doing was I looking was to go really forward. Yeah. And I'll say he's probably a pretty hard man of the match for that game, um, in my opinion. Um, he did really well. But again, this side, I feel some players just aren't putting that best version of themselves on the pitch constantly. Um, you know, you've accused Brennan Johnson of it. I've been very guilty of criticism of him. Um, and he might tans. be a player that is... Sorry? You're such a tans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> oh, let's start again. Round two. Oh. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, I, I agree with Harry what you're saying. It's, you know, players putting their personality and asserting themselves onto a game in the way mm. to show the best of themselves. And I think that's just a bit, been a bit inconsistent all season. Like Ben Davies is a good example. Like he always put in his everything and he's a very solid player. He's, he's, he's got a bit of that sort of crash into him, but he's not a Romero aggressive. He plays his passes, does everything properly, does everything with mm. a good intention. And nine times out of 10, he plays well. Yeah. Yeah, I agree completely. Yeah, I we sort of, Change my mindset. Damn. Mm. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. Did yeah. you really just say that? First time for everything, all right? Well done, Harry. <laughs> well, he's a coach. He's coaching us, right? That's what he's yeah. that's what he does. We're getting it for free. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Wait, you, you mean I'm getting, getting paid for this? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was getting paid for this. Uh, Hannah Hannah pays in different ways. So we oh, um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we've got loads of questions, which is really cool. Right, so mm-hmm. I think we'll go through. We're not going to talk about the Ange haters because I sort of think we've covered that. We covered that in the first bit, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Touched you on wanna, that. yeah. So we have George now. George is famous on the pod, and he's at Do Not Follow eighteen eighty two, and he says <laughs> Arteta has ordered two fish fingers at his favorite restaurant. You're in the kitchen. Oh, this is to you, Harry. So, Harry, you're in the kitchen alone with his plate before it goes out to him. What is the worst possible thing you could do with those fish fingers without raising any tempering suspicions? Well, you know, it's a question that's been on my mind for a long, long time. Uh... Such an Ange answer. (laughs) I'm in hell. (laughs) Jesus. Uh... I know, right? Welcome. I mean, I mean that like if I if I even have an answer to that, like I'm a quite a sadistic person to show that I can think of something like that on the spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I don't know, dip it in some kind of weird drink, and then so you can't see it, and then he takes a bite, and there you go. Okay. Is that a really boring answer? Uh... Does it work? I don't know. So what? So hang on. So you have to you have to do something bad to it. And he can't notice it. Yeah, like covert. Yeah. But yeah. does he notice it when he eat, bites into it? Or is it like a long term doesn't in. notice? It, it might be too late. It might have killed him. Uh, yeah, like I'm thinking cyanide. So was I. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking <laughs> fried in my car. Like, actually, but, you know. he, he notices it. So the second it ends his mouth, he dies and he notices it. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> 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 and when you put it like that. <laughs> so that's the thing. I need to know the context. Is it is it is it long term damage? Is it is it like only something that we will always know? That's, well, I'll that's tell what you I need what. To know. Let's let's uh, let's just do a Google search one second. So what I'm gonna do is. Do we get any prep time for this? Boy... Like, do we know? Has he like booked like a month in advance? What, George? No, Arteta. Poison. Oh, I see. And Sorry. Or has he just walked uh, in? Because I mean, if if you know, if we know like, a good two months in advance, you know. It'd be quite simple to, you know, yeah, not wash that's... a certain part of your body, and he could have a very, very cheesy fish finger. Well, there is that. There, there is. I suppose it's quite hard to get cyanide on the fly. So walk-ins, we don't accept walk-ins. 
No, but I've just Googled poison which can cause permanent paralysis. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, you probably know this, tetradoxin, tetra, tetrodotoxin. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, Alteta acts like he's like paralyzed anyway, doesn't he? He's, he's a plastic character, so I wouldn't really. This is the point of the podcast where I go very silent again. <laughs> so are we okay? So we so we could make like puffer fish fish fingers, oh. right? Because that's yeah, that you... top. That's the top. That what you just said is in puffer fish. That's the poison in puffer fish. Right. I'll be honest. I thought it was meant as a jovial question, like oh, you know, you. No, no, we're 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 going. It's all, it, it's all very funny, just... laughing jokes. No, you're actually talking about paralysis and things. Like that. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the Simpsons episode. <laughs> that was a good episode. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Right, we have more. Let's see. We've got loads, actually. That's genuinely, honestly, the hardest question I've ever been asked on a podcast. I genuinely had no idea what to say. <laughs> oh, that—that's <laughs> nothing. Oh well, you need to come on a lot more. That's, that's one of the easy ones. Like, <laughs> immediately, I'd ask three or four different things that I could. Say. Harry, the things I've been asked, like my mum barely yeah, speaks imagine. to me anymore. Yeah, yeah taken out the will and all of that nonsense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> worth it though. Right, so <laughs> we we have, and we'll we'll wrap up, and then uh, so we have David Spurs FM, who is your so who is in your Tottenham Mount Rushmore. The four sides oh. of Ryan Mason. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Over to you, mate. <laughs> I'm going to really show how silly I am now. How many faces are in Mount Rushmore? Oh, is it four? Is it? I thought it was four. Four or five. I thought it was four. Should we Google it? How many? Okay, it's four. Four, okay. It is? Oh, okay. Yeah. Bringing knowledge on this podcast. <laughs> uh, Someone's got to, Harry. Yeah. Um, I'll probably go Glenn Hoddle. He was my dad's favourite ever player and just everything you hear about him, he was just like, just a magician. Uh, Gareth Bale, because he was actually even my favourite player mm-hmm. uh, when we first signed him from Southampton. Uh, you've got to go Harry Kane for obvious reasons. Or oh, who would the fourth one be? I think it's a, there's no real debate and it has to be... Oh. Mine Agreed. would be Edgar Davids, personally, because he was my first ever football I remember from any any game. Uh, so when Spurs signed him, I was just like over the moon. So yeah, Edgar Davids. I know that's a very off the cuff mm-hmm. one, but yeah, that's a personal one for me. I met him in 2005. He was at, um, I used to work for Tony Robbins, the, the life coach. Okay. And um, he was at one of his big UPWs, uh, Alicia Power within events oh. in London at the Docklands at the Excel there. And he turned up, he came. Oh, cool. And um, yeah, we found him seats, and he's tiny. I didn't realize. That's oh small yeah, yeah, he's not. Yeah, he's not a big guy. Yeah, he's only I, like five foot six or seven. Yeah, I, or something. I didn't yeah. realize that he was that small. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Nice, nice guy. <laughs> yeah. So those are my four. All right. Thfc Lewis asks, ask him why he's blocked me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because he was a cunt. I'd imagine. <laughs> Completely fair. <laughs> Lewis, you'll have to take that one, mate. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I've no idea. No idea who it is, but I'd imagine that's the answer. No, nah, put a full stop at the end of that sentence, Harry. That's enough. Yeah. yeah. No, you should just unblock him and block him again. <laughs> <laughs> unblock him, call him a cunt, then block him again. Yeah, straight to the DM. <laughs> yeah. At, at Skip Twist, Kendrick Lamar or BBL Drizzy? Has to be Kendrick. Oh, come well, on. It has Kendrick. to be Kendrick. He's a Spurs fan, isn't he? Uh, Isn't it? Well, he wore a polo once, and everyone's just assumed it. So no, no, no. that's he, enough for me. He didn't. He really recently come out, and I'm sure he did. We'll find an agenda for it. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah. Die Hard. I heard he was actually in the, our last FA Cup win in the crowd. <laughs> I'm sure. Sh- I'm sh- <laughs> you, <laughs> you saw him. You went to the toilet with him. At yeah. B Hotspur MJ, this is a question for Harry. I remember our defensive record improved a lot under Poch after being quite open in his first year. I'm a fan of what Andrew's trying to do. Do you think he can halve the goals concede the column like Poch did in his second year? As this is a concern, thank you. Uh, Can I just say something? Go... We've never had anyone say thank you at the end of a question. No, I don't, That's I so don't polite. know why that is. That's but nice. It's very polite. 
Can you, all of you start doing that? George, especially you, mate. You want to send in fish <laughs> finger questions? End it with a thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Harry. Um, no, no. I think I think um, I think the goals will definitely go down in terms of conceded. I think that will mostly be due to the attack improving because uh, the ball won't be turned over anywhere near as much. Um, we, you know, there was one season, wasn't there, where, when Spurs were the highest goal scorers and least goals conceded on the potch, um, if I remember right. Um, listen, whether they ever get to that, I don't know. I don't think... I think that it would be difficult because Ange, Ange likes to be very front foot all the time. You look at managers like Guardiola and Arteta, they're actually a lot more pragmatic in the sense that they want control. They don't want risk. Um, so they're, so there'll always be an openness, I'd imagine, to Tottenham with how they play. Um, you know, you're far more likely to see a 1-0 Arsenal win um, than a Spurs win. You know, if Spurs win by a goal, it'll probably end up being 3-2 or something like that. So I think the goals conceded will go down um, by, you know, just by being, um, by improving the players, better forwards, uh, less turnovers and, you know, another year into um, another window and year into Angie's um, way of doing things. But um, yeah, I don't know if Spurs will ever become rock solid. Um, I think they'll become so dominant in most games that they will concede less goals. And because that, that will just be a result of that. But um, yeah, I think we need to wait and see on that one. All right. So I'm just taking a look. At the Premier League, let's see. Spurs have conceded 58 goals. Ideally, next season, we need to try and bring that down. I mean, if you take a look at Arsenal, 28, that's phenomenal, by the way. City, 33, Liverpool, 38, and then the rest of them are in their 50s. If we can say that we're going to concede 42 goals, or for, no, no more than 45 goals next season, that's already quite... Actually, 45 is too high. Let's just mm. say 40 yeah. goals. I think a goal a game conceded is a solid average for a Champions League aspiring so, team. So it should be less, but... 38 goals then, is what you're saying. Yeah, I think that's kind of what it's been for fourth place in recent years, around yeah. that kind of mark. I mean, it's interesting, right? Because we've got really good defenders, but just not very good defence. I, I don't think it's the defenders. I think it's the midfield, which even Ash can't seem to pick properly. I think I don't know, Harry, you, you tell us, but that's what I see. I, 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 so think, I just see that it's a midfield not really protected <clears> properly or are we wrong? I think the biggest issue, um, going analytical again here, is the fact that the all of Spurs' forwards pretty much, apart from maybe Richarlison and Kulosevsky, um, they're all very direct players. They all need it to happen immediately. Um, but they're not the best at, you know, combining and slowing down and making decisions and, you know, things like that. So if it doesn't end in a chance immediately, which obviously, you know, that's not always possible, the ball gets turned over so often. So you're just constantly defending those kind of counter-attacks and transitions. Um, if you, for example, swap, uh, you know, Johnson for Eze and, and, uh, and you know, take Sonny out the centre. And if you put oh, if you put Elise and Eze, even just talk about last night, Elise and Eze in that forward line, Spurs concede way less goals and they create more chances because the amount of times the ball goes into the final third. But because, you know, a lot of Spurs forwards are just built on being able to be direct and decision made for them, as teams are becoming smarter to stop that, that's not always possible. Sometimes you have to be able to go, OK, well, it's not on right now. Can I stay on the ball? Can I combine over here? Can I go 1v1? And Spurs don't have the forwards that can do that. So they just turn the ball over. And that's why you're defending so many counter-attacks. If Spurs have better users of the ball in the final third, they'll create more chances. They'll know how to open up those gaps. And in turn, because they stay on the ball longer and actually create chances on goal, there'll be less attacks to defend. And I think I think it's the I think it's the forward line and the profile of players. I think when if that gets fixed in the summer, I think Spurs not only become a lot stronger in attack, but they concede way less goals. I really do believe that. So you you really like Basuma, right? And I do too. Yeah. I think we all do. Do you think he could be one of the players to be shipped out with somebody? Um, oh, Basuma is such a tricky one because I think that if he gives the best, if he plays to the best of his ability, he is like ideal for what Ange wants. That play that can get the ball under pressure, turn, play forward. Um, he can cover ground as well. He's good at retrieving the ball. Um, but, you know, it's just the consistency of that. 
I personally, if I was in charge of recruitment, I would keep Basuma, but I would sign someone like Archie Gray, if that's possible. Um, someone that's young, won't necessarily go into a top club and be the starter or the main man all the time, um, but good enough to do it if he needs to be, can also play elsewhere. And then I think what that does is it gives you it gives you space and cover to see if Basuma can become that consistent player. Um, because if he can be, I think he's as good as it gets out there for that role. Um, but you don't want to just outward replace him because, you know, he could be that player. Um, so that's what I would be doing and giving him one more year to see, well, can you actually make it consistent? And if you can't, then obviously then questions have to be asked. Yeah, I was going to say, I think some of that comes in just managing a squad, which if we get Europe, we have to do. And I think yeah. any player playing every game, you're not going to get, eight nines tens out of them every single game like you look even like the best players like you know you're in Mbappe's they have games where they go missing as football Twitter loves to say um you know if you're able to rotate and I think City are well they're very very good at this players tend to I think it's on average they tend to play around in the high 80s of games mm. per season when they've got like all the competitions and I think if you can rotate better you're gonna be a player's sharper I think a bit fresher less likely to make the sloppy passes or, you know, bad decisions out of, out of possession. Um, I mean, yeah, if you manage that, every player will go up another level. And I think that's mm-hmm. something Basuma could benefit from having been, well, all of our players could benefit from having, you know, and just had a pretty set 11 all season. And say so if you can start to rotate a player or two here or there without a steep drop-off in performance like we do experience, it's only going to be to anyone's and everyone's benefit. Yeah. Harry, Archie Gray, yes. do you think that we might sign him but to play to be an understudy to Porter or to play in midfield? I think I think that's uh, listen, I, I he was just the name I picked out in terms of the kind of profile I think they need to look for, but I think that's the beauty of him is the fact that you know, let he allows you to he, he covers lots of different areas. So, you know, if you do sign him and you keep Bisuma and Bisuma turns into the consistent player that we all want, then Archie Gray can definitely play eight. He can play, he's played a lot of right back this year, so he can play the inverted Poro role, like you said. If Basuma doesn't cut it, then he can replace Basuma as the main man as a number six, because he, he is that good. Um, so I think signing someone like that is ideal. Um, not even taking into account the fact he's homegrown as well, which obviously, you know, is beneficial because I know Spurs have a bit of an issue right now with that in terms of squad registration um, stuff. I don't know the old ins and outs of that, but um, yeah, I think he can do that role as well. So I think, I think a player like that is adaptable to play elsewhere. Spurs need more of those players. Um, I think that's why you've seen a bit of an issue with Dragas in this year is that, you know, Van Der Ven and Romero are probably the two players in the team that are, are undoubtedly, you're not going to improve them, um, you know, and Drag is in coming in that can only really fill in in that role or at centre back. He's going to get less minutes. He's going to basically have to rely on Van der Ven or Romero to have a major drop off in form, which is unlikely suspended or injuries. Um, whereas if you sign someone that can play elsewhere, it's easier to keep them happy, to keep them fresh. Um, so I think Spurs need more players in the group actually that are like that, that aren't locked into just doing certain things and that can fill in different roles. And Archie Gray would definitely be a player like that. Interesting. Um, one more question for you. Yep. It's from at Mattis1376. So, question for Harry. Does Victor Roque fit the number nine for if for Spurs? He's five foot nine. With the fact that the system provides mostly low crosses on the ground, his high technical ability and potential seems like a great fit, in my honest opinion. I didn't know who he was. I Googled him. Is it Barcelona? Never seen him. Yeah. Really. I can't pretend to have seen lots of him. Um, so I'm, I can't give you a full analysis on him. I've seen bits and pieces. He looks to be a very high level player, very dynamic, very positive, that relentless positivity that we'd speak about with Ange that he wants. Um, so whether he drops deep, um, you know, he wants to get the ball on the turn, go forward. Uh, he, he can also play on the shoulder. It seems um, highly technical player. Um, seems to be quite a powerful player as well, even though he's not the tallest can, can ride challenges. Bit of a seems to be a bit of a Luis Suarez mold. Um, so listen, if 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 the things I've been saying and the things I've seen from very short viewing are are the case, then yeah, definitely a play that you would look at 
um, if it's doable. But again, I can't give too much on him. I haven't seen enough of him to really comment. Well, look, we need to swap out our Brazilians for better ones, right? So, you can <laughs> all right, before we go, let's talk about Burnley and then Hannah, it's over to you because you've been talking too much on this pod, mate. So, uh, <laughs> Burnley, Hannah, do you want to kick off with that? What school is, predictions? Hold on, when is it? It's this Saturday, isn't it? Three o'clock, yeah, UK time, five o'clock, Cyprus. What's that seven o'clock in the morning, America? Or is it Eastern Seaboard, isn't it? Ew, I think so. Yeah, so John will be up in the morning at the dog and pony, most probably. Yeah, do you think we're going to beat him? I, I I do think we are, yeah. I've been joking all week that it will be a 1 0 loss in the 94th minute, but actually, I do think we'll win. Well, so, go on. We need to we need to win two out of our last three to make sure we get fifth. Yeah. And uh, we know which one we want to lose. <laughs> Don't say that in front of Harry. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, go on. What are you going to say about him? Well, I was going to give you my score prediction and I was oh. going to give you Josh's as well. Oh, what is it? What's yours? 2-1. And Josh's? Josh is a little more more optimistic. He said 3-1. Todd, what's yours, mate? See, even Todd can't unmute himself fast enough. That's how. That's the power of Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is. Can't get there. Um, yeah, no, um, it is so hard to call. I think a lot of the game will be decided at our left back and their right midfielder, like it was against Liverpool. If they play, especially, I don't know if he's fit or not, but their player Odebert, I'm not sure I pronounced that right. But if he plays against Emerson Royale, Emerson Royale is getting torn a new one. That is, you're not going to see anything like that unless you're on board up. Even then, that's a doubt. Um, By the way, I don't know any Burnley players. They've got a few good ones, to be fair. I say, I say good, but like some very like solid them. players. Burnley team. I, go on, carry on. I'm going to... Yeah. Um, see, I, I honestly can't see it. I mean, it's Burnley's... Is it Burnley's last chance to stay up or have a chance at least I think you're right yeah I think they have to win the game don't they I think yeah that's the thing and so they have to put on a performance and it it is one of those ones with our sort of form at the minute and uncertainties in different areas of the pitch especially at you know Basuma has to step up and drop another game like he did but again the players have been playing a lot of football and so I can I can see Burnley nicking a result. Um oh. like a really shit housey two one. We'll have like about fifty thousand shots <laughs> and they'll have two shots, one on target and an own goal to win. I, I see it being oh. like that. Maybe I won't go. Yeah. I'm going to the women's <laughs> game the next day for Are a you? bit of copium. Yeah. You say copium, it's probably a date, isn't it? No, no, I wish. <laughs> it's dry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I might see if I can get get down the tunnel for some autographs. I don't know. Um, I'm not in a creepy way. Sly um, dog. I need to stress that. <laughs> <laughs> if Rosalia Ayan wants to message me, hey, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna block her. Um, but no, I've not watched a women's game. Uh, it's a cup final. I've never seen a Spurs cup final. Um, so yeah, hopefully yes. it's good vibes. So mm-hmm. Jay Rodriguez plays for them. I shouldn't. I, I actually remember that. But on their website, he looks like he's a he's a six year old who's been photoshopped to look like he's forty. <laughs> Nathan Redmond. I didn't realise he played for them. He had a lot of potential. I thought when he was younger. What happened, Harry? Do you you know who Nathan Redmond is? Don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you think? Am I am I right to say? I I just always remember watching him, thinking he seemed to have a lot of things and. Why yeah, good player. It? Yeah, yeah, good player. Yeah, just it's it, being a, being able to stay at the top level is one of the hardest things that to do in football, like that staying power. Um, you know, it, it probably is the hardest thing to do. Actually, um, it's why when you have players like Harry Kane that just keep producing no matter what, it is remarkable because there's so much talent out there. But being able to stay 
and make it work. And to be fair, even to Redmond, he stayed at the top for a long, long time, you know, which just shows how hard it is. The fact that, you know, you're even questioning his drop off and he's still in the Premier League. It just shows yeah, how difficult it is. But, um, you know, he, 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 he's had a good career and he's had lots of, lots of, um, he had lots of talent and obviously still does. Yeah. What's, what's your score prediction, mate? Honestly, 4-1 Tottenham. I was going to say, oh. I was going to say the same thing, 4-1. Mm. Yeah. Because of the way they play. I don't think they're going to change their ways now. They're going to come at us. You know, and I, I just, want I just think the whole club are going to really be like, you know what, like, we don't like what's being said about us. Like, we're going to be all in. We're all in. And I think that they'll just, I think they'll, they'll suffocate Burnley and it will just end up being too much for them. Yeah, okay. we, we walloped. And was it 5-1, five, 5-2? Mm. Five, their ground? 5-2. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. And I, I've, I've just got a feeling it will be, um... I mean, look, the, the Man City game, I think we're going to throw. Well, no, we're not. The players won't. But the, the supporters, most of them will want him to throw it. Mm. And that'll probably be a weird atmosphere. But um, yeah, this is the last big home game where we have to win. And I, I've just got a feeling we're going to wallop them again. And that'll be that, I think. Because they're on 26 points. Are they? Let me just make sure. Yeah. So, no, they're on 24 points. I, even if they beat I think it's us. Loon's 26. Yeah, Luton's 26. Forest is 29. They lost their repeal today. Um, I mean, they really thought that by having the owner tweet out what he tweeted out against the refs, that their repeal would have stood. But yeah, I mean, it's what it is. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I, do you think we're going to play skip there, left back? We can't <laughs> play Royale. Well. Yeah, I, I thought he did all right. Skippy was great. He's done well. Yeah. Boy, did good. You like Skippy. Yep. I, I <laughs> didn't expect him. I, I didn't even think about it that he could play there. I don't think anyone did, to be fair. No. <laughs> yeah. To be fair to him. And a lot of people calling for Mickey or Gio to play there. Um, I worry about Gio playing there purely because he is just so, so reliant on his left foot whenever I watch him. And he will get injured. Oh, you know, he'll get snapped like a twig. Yeah. Um, But yeah. No, play Skippy. He was great. Agreed. Yep. I think we're done, guys. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Harry, what do you think? <laughs> Are you going to come on again and answer more fish finger and dildo questions? <laughs> Only if those are the questions. I don't want to talk about football. Oh, that's... <laughs> fine. That's fine with us. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. We are going to soon launch a sister pod called The Other Way, where uh, we talk about different things that aren't football-related. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I think it would be good if you come on that. We can coach Fucking you. Know, the vol that's going to go on on that. You talk about that stuff already on football. What's it going to be like if it's a topic <laughs> not football? <laughs> gonna... I don't know what you mean, Harry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so innocent over it. <laughs> I'm a reformed character, I hope you know. <laughs> no, it's been a good one. No, it I appreciate has. it. No, I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me on. Always, cool. um, um, yeah. Um, if you guys ever want me in the future, I'm more than happy to. We do. Aww. We do. In fact, so the guys know this, but I've not spoken to them about it for months. So they're going to probably act like they don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so we're going to start to expand soon because we've got quite a few listeners now. Nice. And we're, and we're growing. And hopefully next year we can start doing some YouTube stuff. But what I would like to do is have like a little preview pod. And okay. um, we, well, I'd love to have you on just to like yeah, just talk to some tactics, tactics and dildos. Um, right yeah. on my street. <laughs> <laughs> In that order. Up your dark yeah. alley. Yeah. yeah. It was a... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Say well, goodbye. Really enjoyed it. Say goodbye, goodbye Harry. Cheers, guys. Say goodbye, Torch. Goodbye, everyone. And Hannah, before you go, can you ask uh, Harry to leave a review and then talk? Oh, about yeah. yeah, Harry, do you want to leave us a review on Spotify or Apple or both? What? What, what do you mean, like stars, comments? Oh, both would be great, Harry. All right, Thanks. so one star, shit podcast, waste of time, <laughs> that kind of stuff. <laughs> exactly. But we'll return. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course I will. Don't be silly. Of course I will. Lovely. There you go. Simple as that. Everybody else needs to do the same. 
because I'm sick of saying everyone's disabled because they can't give us a review. So, yeah. <laughs> there is one thing you can do for us, though. If you're on Spotify, right, and if you click on our pod, you'll then see, like, a little logo. Hopefully you're following. You'll say following. You'll have a little bell. If you just click on the bell, like I've just done, and then there's a little cog. If you click there, and then where it says downloads, auto download episodes, if you click that, then what happens is the algorithm kicks in and it really helps us grow like super fast. So if you can do Yay. that as well, that will be really, really helpful. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. yeah. Do I get to say bye now? You do. Love you. Bye. Bye for me.